It's real Nibba hours. But actually, it's even earlier than Nibba hours. It's Bibba hours. But actually, it's even earlier than Bibba hours. It's Bibba hours. And we got literally no time to waste, boys. The Adpocalypse Part 2 has begun. You gotta roll with the punches. It's a cutthroat business. Today, guys, hopefully we are finishing up the spears, doing the heat treat and the sharpening, and we're making the spear shafts, the handles. Here you go, boys, and four girls. Hope you like it. And if you actually really do like it, make sure you leave a like. I gotta get into that algorithm somehow. Okay, so I don't have access to any high-quality hardwood rods that can be used as spear shafts, so I kinda gotta make my own. So I'm starting out by gluing gluing these two mahogany planks together. I've never uh, used this tight bond Ultimate 3 before. From what I can see, just from what's gushing out the sides, I can tell this stuff is probably a lot stronger than the wood itself. This stuff is crazy hard. I actually can't even chip a piece off with my nail. So I used a chisel and I took off any big drops from the side that could mess up the contact with the guard here. And now I'm gonna clean up the edge. <laughs> Get this side too. And now I'll cut it into strips that are the same width as the thickness of the two boards stacked up. I will set the blade to a 45 degree angle and we're going to slice off the corners. All right, now I'm going to... Dude, are you joking me? Check out that before and after. Freak yeah, dude. All right, now do the same thing on the second one. Now some people out there will tell you if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And then there's some other people out there that'll tell you if it looks stupid, but it works, then it ain't stupid. But I'm here to give you the true true. And the real fact of the matter is if breaking it works, then don't stop breaking it. And for probably only Gosh himself knows how long, I've been cutting the necks off of these $6 shovels from Home Depot and using them to reinforce my spears, and I did that with a flail too. And up until someone can give me a dang good reason to stop doing it, I'm gonna keep on doing that, but only because every single time I do, without fail, I get a lot of backlash from these shovel fetish weirdos who make the exact same complaint every single time. And I'm paraphrasing, but it's something to the effect of you wasted a shovel 
So allow me to explain to you my cost benefit analysis so that you too can feel confident that I've thought this through. Option number one, go to Home Depot, spend $6 on a shovel, pop these two rivets out right here, pop the end off, chop this bit off right here, and boom, you're done. You got a slightly tapered, super tough steel tube. You also got about three and a half feet of ash wood, which is mint for weapon handles. You got all this goodness here that you can forge and hammer flat and use it for whatever you want. Basically, 16th inch of hardenable, heat treatable steel, all for six bucks and a couple minutes of your time. Option number two, go to Home Depot, buy yourself a steel tube for about $4, cut it down to length, then cut it down the side at just the perfect taper that when you hammer the slit closed, then the tube tapers just exactly how you need it to. Then drill a hole in the side, and 30 minutes later, you have literally exactly what you could have just gotten from this, but likely uglier and no extra building materials. Which if you were to try to buy all those extra building materials separately, just, you know, a three and a half foot ash wood rod, however much heat treatable sheet metal that is, probably gonna run you about 20 bucks, but you get all of that for $6 if you just use a shovel. So long story short, if option number two still sounds more effective to you, I don't know what to say, man. It kinda sounds like you're uh, working with a child brain, if you know what I'm saying. All right, I'll start with this one because I just had it lying around and I'm eager to test out my big boy grinder. I'm spooked, but I'm ready. <laughs> what? What the heck? That's hilarious. <laughs> how, mu how much time have I wasted using small grinders? Obviously, small grinders have their time and place for, you know, their own particular jobs, but that was what? Like four seconds? That was so quick, the piece isn't even hot. That's awesome, dude. Then when you're going in for the cleanup, you can use your baby grinder. That cut was so quick, that was almost silly. Let me get this other one ready. Back when I was a young man, they used to do two rivets coming in from both sides. Now I guess it's just one rivet that goes through. Can't say that's a bad thing though. Let's see if I can hammer it out from the side. Epic. Looks like I got a new way of doing that. That's awesome. I'm legitimately stoked about that. Let me know in the comments what you think I should do with these. Ooh, I bet I could use those partially for my gauntlets. All right, so I just put this on to kind of see how it would look and I can't get it off. I don't know how I'm gonna do <laughs> So uh, I'll uh, show you what I'm doing right now while I try to figure out how to get this thing back off. First, you're gonna line up that cut about as centered as you can. That's about good. And then here on the side, I'm gonna mark out the thickness of the spear tang. Like a that one. Same on the other side. I will measure from the bottom of the cuff to the bottom of the tang, seven eighths. So I'm gonna bring this marking up 7 eighths. So the plan is to cut these two markings out and then the next time I put this cuff on, it'll be able to sink all the way down. Cause as you can see, that's choking up on the blade right there. That's not enough stabby, I need more stabby. Now how the heck do I get this off? See, I kind of forced the blade through and it opened this up because it's springy. But then once I got it past the wider part in the front, I can't get it back off. Cool. Look at that. It's a little crooked. Look at that. Tell me that's not freaking cool. Tell me that's not clean as heck. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Ooh, it kind of feels like a little, like a little dagger. A little assassin blade going on there. I am all right with this. All right, now with this one, we're kind of working with the worst of both worlds because I had to cut the collar a lot longer than the other one, so that means it's gonna taper down a lot more. But then on top of that, the blade here is a lot wider than on the other one, so as you can imagine. 
not really going anywhere. So I did some cutting on the inside right here, thinking I can maybe slide it in this way and then turn it. Uh, that got me to about halfway through, but obviously still a lot more to go. So what I'm gonna kind of do is spread this open and then I'm gonna hit it with the blowtorch to ruin the temper on it so that it'll uh, normalize and stay open. I did some thinking about how I'm gonna spread it and I'm gonna make a couple of wedges out of this quarter inch steel plate. That seems like the simplest way to do this. Let's see if it worked. Ooh. Yeah, let's see if it really worked. Do I work? Oh, come on. No way. Well, it's a lot better than before. Wait, maybe I can. Okay, we can work with that. All right, we're gonna do the same thing on this one that we did with the other one. All right, now it's everybody's favorite time of the season. What? We're gonna be heat treating and I'm gonna be heat treating with the heat from my forge. It's the first time I've uh, tried this out. Now first I'm gonna heat up the oil. Somebody told me that it heat treats better if the oil is warm. That might have been the uh, missing link the last time that I tried to heat treat and it didn't really work the first time. So I'm gonna let that burn for a minute and it should be pretty warm in no time at all. We're gonna go with the big boy first because I honestly care about this one less. We're just gonna slow cook it for now and then once it's warmed up a little bit, we'll turn up the heat, get it to where it's gotta be, and then we'll dunk it. Right here we go. I'll right, let that cool down before I do the file test. Now I'm gonna work on the littler one. Here's the first one. Oh Lord, let it be. Ah, I don't think that did. I don't think it took. No, that's definitely biting into it. Ah, that sucks. I give it another go. It's uh, noticeably more yellow than the last time. Ready, set. All right, round two. It's better, but it's still not skating. Could it be that this steel just doesn't harden as hard as this file? I mean, these are pretty cheap wrenches. That's really weird. I mean, I got that quench about as good as you're gonna get it. I wonder what kind of steel this is. I don't know if this one will be any better. Nope. I'm gonna let them cool down fully and then I'll give them a test again. Nope. If any of you guys are slightly disappointed with the way that this video is ending, allow me to direct your attention towards the way I freaking feel right now. I want to make a sword. I want to make a sword real bad. Let me show you a little something. Do you know what this is? This is about seven and a half feet of 5160 spring steel. That same steel that I made that epic hunting knife out of. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, my palms are actually itching to move on from this build. So if any of you guys are thinking that I may be like stretching this video series out on purpose, you can be, you can rest assured, I don't want to be doing this anymore. I fully acknowledge I have at least the best job on planet earth and the most loyal fan base so i know you guys aren't going to be like really super mad but believe me guys i'm working as fast as i can so i asked you guys uh for advice on what you think i could do to harden these things it seems like the issue is that uh, the steel doesn't have enough carbon to actually harden on its own which is weird because it's a wrench but i don't i don't really know but it's looking like the dominant suggestion for what i should do for this is case hardening i'll get more into that when we actually give it a shot in the next video so look forward to that guys i'm at least excited to try something new i've never tried case hardening before now real 
quick guys, just one minute of your time. Got to bring up a little something that's been going on recently. It's no secret, I've been pretty happy recently. And as I've been getting happier and happier, it seems like from the comments at least and from my likes and dislike ratios and stuff, it seems like you guys are enjoying my videos a whole lot more. But that made this particular trend a little more confusing because I noticed that as my videos seem to be getting better and better and you guys like them more and more, about half of my patrons on Patreon have been pulling their donations and I was trying to figure out why something like that would be happening and I realized that as I have been getting happier and happier and I'm whining and crying and complaining a lot less, people might be getting this idea that like I don't need Patreon anymore and it's like, oh, he's doing fine because I've said that multiple times that I'm doing pretty good with money. But the reason why I'm doing pretty good with money is because of stuff like Patreon and because of you guys buying my hoodies and stuff like that. If you're not doing that stuff anymore, then I'm not doing good with money anymore. So I just wanted to clear that up, guys, especially with this freaking adpocalypse. This one is hitting me a lot harder than the last one. The last one honestly didn't even really affect me. But this one, it's like, it's crazy because I'm not even getting demonetized really. All my videos are still in the green. There's just literally not enough ads to go around and I'm not getting enough ads on my videos. And where I was making like one video a month before and now I've made probably 10 or 11 videos in the last two months, my ad revenue has actually gone down which is just insane. It's gone down hundreds of dollars and I'm not one of those crazy YouTubers that's making, you know, $50,000 a month. I'm making really just enough to pay my mortgage and my car and to put a little bit into savings and that's about it. So in case I haven't been clear up until this point, Patreon is still super, super greatly uh, appreciated and at this point really pretty necessary. So only if you can afford it, obviously. I really, really do appreciate that stuff. So thank you guys so much for uh, all the help that you've been able to give me up until this point. If you have had to pull your donations because of like other stuff, absolutely fine. Thank you times 100 for what you have given me up until this point. I really, really deeply appreciate it. Uh, that's about all I got for tonight, guys. Thank you very, very much for watching. Talk to you later.